It is now my honor to call on His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Comrade Paredes. To our historic leaders, who will be eternally united by the same principles and dreams of freedom. The, French, the friendship between the people of Venezuela and Namibia is as historic as the strong political, diplomatic, and humanitarian support that Swapo received from our country towards the independence of the country. Venezuela today, as he did in 1978 as a member of the United Nations Security Council that gave its, sup its full support for Resolution 435, wishes to reiterate our recognition of Swapo and its struggle for independence. Swapo has responsibly endeavored to establish and maintain the basis for the creation of a free, independent, and democratic homeland. And for that, we salute you. As we celebrate this important occasion with the unveiling of this decorative artistic representation by Namibia's uh, visual artist, Namboa Malua, it's important to acknowledge that these are only four of many leaders with a single objective of restoring the dignity of the peoples and their right for self-determination. This artwork, the mural, symbolizes an invitation for the youth to rethink the past and bring the same past legacy to the present, to turn it into an action agenda for today and for the common destiny of our peoples. Comrades, allow me to use this important forum before a supportive people like the Namibians to remember that Cuba and Venezuela, as well as other sister nations, are subject to illegal sanctions against the enjoyment of the elementary human rights of our peoples. Therefore, we call for its immediate lifting as requested by the vast majority of the members of the United Nations. I conclude expressing from that from Venezuela, we cannot consider the struggle for justice and the liberation of the peoples conclude until the people of Palestine are free. Palestine must be totally free sooner than later. And if you allow me, I would like to, to conclude with uh, some words from Hugo Chavez during the visit to Venezuela uh, from His Excellency President Mahmoud Habas of Palestine in 2011. And I quote, Palestine is a state. It has territory, history, it has people, laws, and its own and legitimate government. That's why Palestine must be recognized as an, as an another legitimate state. I invite all the people without distinction that we should all support this cause. The cause of the Palestinian people is to support the cause of humanity, the cause of the justice and peace in the world. Thank you, Nene. Thank you very much. Our commitment to the struggle in Namibia and in South Africa was not less than our commitment to the struggle in Palestine. In the old days, the pictures of Nelson Mandela, Sam Juma, Yasser Arafat, Fidel Castro were always held in our training camps, with Che Guevara too, and recently the pictures of Hugo Chavez used to decorate our trenches, but also used and still decorating our hearts and our minds. They wrote our history, they created our future, they sacrificed, their sacrifice made our lives much easier, much safer, and much freer that our enemies did not give up and they did not accept the defeat. They are continuing working in order to defeat our successes and our revolutions, but in different ways and different forms. They have transformed their ability to infiltrate, to inject defeat among all of us. That's why we have to be careful, we have to be alert, 
and we have to stand to defend the successes of our revolutions. And I want you always to remember that your sisters and brothers in Palestine are still fighting to achieve the same objectives. We still working for our self-determination, for our freedom and for our independence. All my colleagues here, the Palestinian delegation, all of them, they were born after 1967, the year of Israeli occupation of West Bank, East Jerusalem, Gaza Strip, the land of the state of Palestine. They have lived all their lives under Israeli military occupation. They aspire to be like you, to be free, to live in free Palestine. And we cannot do it alone. We need your help, we need your support, and we need your solidarity. Imagine what it means when you wake up in the morning in order to count the death, how many Palestinians were killed, how many children were killed. Yesterday alone, two Palestinians were killed, one 16 years old who stood up to defend his land from the Israeli settlers. And another one, a disabled man of 55 years old, succumbed to his injuries and also died yesterday. Yesterday alone, the Israelis announced the confiscation of thousands and thousands of Palestinian privately owned acres of land. Yesterday alone, the Israelis announced the construction of illegal settlement units to house illegal Israeli settlers in the occupied Palestinian land. Yesterday alone, the Israeli soldiers did incursions into so many Palestinian villages, refugee camps, and cities to undermine and to threaten the lives of innocent Palestinians. The incursions are made after midnight in order to inject fears among the Palestinian families and their children. Yesterday alone, Israeli military occupation demolished Palestinian homes. Yesterday alone, Israeli settlers occupied Palestinian houses illegally. Yesterday alone, Israeli settlers burned Palestinian trees. This has really happened yesterday, but it happens every day, every day. The occupation did not start yesterday. The occupation started 55 years ago, and it continues. And it will continue as long as the international community does not care. As, as long as there is no serious sound and voice and power to stop it. And that's why we look at you in Namibia, in South Africa, in Cuba, in Nicaragua, in many other countries, Algeria, in Egypt, in many other countries, in order really to stand up, to voice their rejection to the continuation of occupation, and in order to see that Palestinian people deserve the right to their self-determination, freedom, and independence. The Israeli occupation transformed the prolonged occupation after 55 years into a system of colonialism and after that into a system of apartheid. And we do live in the occupied land of the state of Palestine under the system of apartheid, a system that was, you know, defeated in Namibia and in South Africa. The system was revived in occupied land of Palestine by the Israeli occupation. And that's why, comrades, 
your fight is not over. Your fight should continue. The luta continue. Thank you very much. On behalf of uh, many Namibians, appreciate your assistance which we offered early this year to train Namibians every Tuesday and Thursday at your embassy in the Spanish language. And I believe once they are fully trained, uh, uh, our Honorable Minister of uh, International Relations will try to find a way uh, to uh, assign them to, <laughs> to some of our embassies in the Spanish world. Okay? But thank you very much for that. It is really appreciated. Now, um, when you talk of the history of Namibia, uh, you would realize that there is an umbilical cord that ties the independence of Namibia to the revolution that took place in Cuba. There's that umbilical cord, and that umbilical cord was only cut after Quito Kwana Valley. Uh, you know, the efforts of the Cubans to the liberation of Namibia cannot be deleted from Namibia's independence. Cuba is synonymous to the liberation, not only of Namibia, but of South Africa. And indeed, of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. And the stability of Angola. Therefore, it is my great honor to invite the ambassador of the Republic, I'll not say the Republic of Cuba, but the Republic of Fidel Castro <laughs> to the podium. Yasser Arafat, the leader of the Palestinian People Organization, the commander Hugo Chavez Frias, leader of the Bolivarian Revolution, and the commander in chief Fidel Castro Ruz, historical leader of the Cuban Revolution. They will be able to synthesize in their mind the message that they all represent in a single revolution of, for human progress and for the definitive independence of our people. For Cuba, it's a particular important this unveiling ceremony in the context of the commemoration that are taking place in this week in Cuba for the 69th anniversary of the attack of the Moncada and Carlos Manuel Césped de Barrac in 1953 by Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro Ruz, accompanied by Cuban's political leader, who, who he was united by the close friendship and a solid commitment to a struggle for a revolutionary task, made Cuba a real independent a sovereign country that took place later on January 1st, 1959. Fidel always has the deepest conviction that when the crisis arrives, leader could emerge. That is how emerge the leader that accompanied him in this mural. Fidel educates Cubans in the practice of international, internationalism as part of our own history of a struggle against colonialism. To conclude, I would like to thank Namibia and all the countries represented here today for its permanent support to Cuba in the international battle against the blockade of the United States. I would also to like to take this opportunity to reiterate the Cuban support and commitment to the struggle of the Palestinian people and thank both His Excellency Riyad Malki, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine, for joining us in this ceremony and the Swapo Party for the permanent support represented in this ceremony by Honorable Netumbo Nandendaiwa. Likewise, I would like to thank the Embassy of Venezuela and Ambassador Omar Berroterán for his great initiative. Lonely. 
Don't say education for all. No. It's education for all. Yes. Now the next speaker is somebody who made education a catchword in the whole history of the liberation of Namibia. It was not an easy task. Receiving people who were groomed in Bantu education and inducting such people into a modern education which would be acceptable to independent African countries was not an easy feat. Establishing schools in forests, and I'll invite you uh, after this ceremony to get in, in this uh, building. You'll see on the right hand side, this a typical photo of a dug out class in exile. It was not fancy education that you had buildings and computers and all, all those things, no. But the product that, that came out from those schools is the product that you call leadership today. Because all the people you call leaders today had to go through those schools. And that education was led by Honorable Comrade Nahas Angula, former Prime Minister, but today speaking on behalf of our founding president and the Semnoyoma Foundation. When he entered here, I looked at his shoes. But the first thing I looked at, the shoes. And then I realized, I think he fits in the shoes of uh, the founding president, Comrade Sam Neyoma. Even though, I think we still need a few lessons to make sure that uh, he fully fits. Please welcome Comrade Nasango. Yes, to celebrate the sixth, second anniversary of the founding of the Swap Party. In this regard, allow me, uh, allow me to express my deepest gratitude to the embassies of the Republic of Cuba, the Bolivian. Republic of Venezuela and the state of Palestine for organizing this event that enables us to celebrate the sixth, second anniversary of the founding of the Swapo Party and in order to cement the historical ties between the people of Namibia, Cuba, Venezuela and the Palestine. Indeed, the friendship and strong bonds of solidarity between our countries date back to the years of our protected armed liberation struggle. As we are celebrating the sixth second anniversary of the Swapo Party today, we should not be ob oblivious of the fact that some of our sister organizations are still being oppressed by imperialists as they are still struggling to achieve independence and freedom. In this regard, we reaffirm our solidarity with the people of Western Sahara in their cause for their right to self-determination through a United Nations supervised referendum leading to genuine independence. Similarly, we are morally obliged to support the struggle of the people of Palestine for freedom, 
equality and genuine national independence to guarantee peace in the region. Director of Proceedings, on the occasion of the sixth second anniversary of the founding of Swapo Party, Swapo Party must reorientate itself, readjust and completely reorganize itself and it is organizational machinery to be inclusive and representative in all its decision-making structures at all levels and spheres in order for the organization to be more responsive to the new demands of the current moment characterized by modern, young, and the media literate captive markets in the voter pools. Due to the preoccupation with managing internal conflicts, the movement has not been mitigating the dangers that any governing party has to contend with and manage, such as the danger of social distance and isolation of the party from the masses, the danger of procratic and demobilization of the masses, the danger of corruption and sins of incumbency, the danger of factionalism, ill discipline, and disunity fueled and inspired by the battles over the control of power and resources, and the danger of using institutions to settle inner party differences, the danger of lack of capacity and capability to implement policies, the danger of gatekeeping, the danger of divisive slate electoral <laughs> politics, wage drivers, etc. Failure to decisively act against fact factionalism with the ranks of the organization will pose a serious challenge to democratic centralism, a fundamental principle that is supposed to enhance the unity and cohesion of a revolution organization. In a revolution organization, constructive engagement should be encouraged within the context of promoting internal democracy. Because only through open engagement will members be able to rise and analyze challenges of the time and devise measures that are necessary to address the challenges. When internal debate is neither allowed nor tolerated, some members may fight platforms outside the formal structure and processes to express their own views. Once this happens, the unity and the cohesion of the organization will suffer most. Director of Proceedings, the unveiling of this mural is the distinct honor to the leaders that made their contributions in leading our people during the bitter and protected armed liberation struggle against oppression, against oppression and injustices in the world. For this reason, the young generation and all progressive people should emulate their bravery in order to make the world a better place for all. Indeed, we are extremely grateful and remain indebted to the Cuban people under the leadership of El Commandant Fidel Castro Rus. By his invitation, the majority of our children who survived the traumatic experiences of Kasinga Massacre were offered free education in Cuba. It was also under the leadership of El Commandant 
Fidel Castro rules that the combined forces of FAPLA and Cuba international troops, including plan, estimated at 15,000 at Quito Guanabara, brought about South Africa's ultimate defeat and collapse of apartheid, forcing South Africa to the negotiating table and to eventually sign the ceasefire agreement on the 22nd of uh, December 1988, followed by another ceasefire agreement with SWAPO in March 21, 1989, and the implementation of the United Nations Resolution 435. In the same vein, it was thanks to the late comrade Hugo Chavez Frias, former president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Venezuela's effectiveness of his state directed development policies to improve the lives of his people, that he won the historical and decisive electoral trials, not only for the people of Venezuela, but for all the countries of the Bolivarian Alliance for the peoples of our America, as well as all the people of the third world countries, as it ensured the continuity of the struggle for the genuine, fraternal, complementary, and human in, uh, integration among the nations and peoples of Latin America and the Caribbean. I share his ideals for greater integration and the strengthening of South-South cooperation as an indispensable condition for sustainable development and the sovereignty of our countries. In the same vein, I reiterate our unwavering solidarity and unyielding support to his successor, His Excellency Comrade Nicolas Maduro, President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, following in the footsteps of the great 19th century independence hero, El Barreto Simon Bolivar. Director of Proceedings, I am proud to be associated with the mural paint as it supports the agenda of peace and respect for international laws. We all agree that peace and security in the world is a prerequisite to sustainable economic development. Therefore, it is imperative that the humanitarian and conflict situations be resolved to achieve this. In this regard, I would like to repeat my call that foreign forces must stop interfering in Venezuela's internal affairs and lift all sanctions against Venezuela. In the same vein, I call for the lifting of economic embargo that has been imposed on Cuba. Similarly, we are indeed proud to be associated with the name of Yasser Arafat, a revolutionary giant and patriot who devoted the great part of his life to the liberation of his fatherland. His was a life of intense struggle, hardship, simplicity and clarity of vision, and sacrifices that combined immensely to heroic struggle of the Palestinian people. Our position on the situation in Israel and Palestine is guided by our experience of apartheid and the duty to act in solidarity with the people subjected to discrimination and violence and not by anti-Semitism. The situation of the Palestinian people under the Israeli occupation remains dire due to the repressive, destructive and colonial policies and practices that continue to be perpetrated by Israel. 
in grave violation of international law with impunity as the international community continues to fail to hold Israel accountable in accountance with the law. Last but not least, the people of Western Sahara must be freed and their state be recognized. It is my sincere belief that the world would be a better place if these issues could be resolved amicably. In conclusion, I urge all progress people in the world to always work towards finding mutually acceptable and amicable solutions in the fraternal spirit to pressing needs in the world. To all SWAP members, supporters and sympathizers, let us unite and work together with other progressive nations and states for the better of humanity. As I always say, a people united, mm. striving to achieve a common good for all members of society, will always emerge victorious. I thank you for your attention. Currently also a member of the Central Committee and the Political Bureau of the Central Committee. Please help me to welcome the SWAPO Vice President, Honorable Comrade Netumbo Nandi Ndaito. Viva Comrade Netumbo, viva! Viva! Viva the Vice President of the party, viva! Viva! Ala, ala SWAPO party, ala, ala! Ala, ala! We are here this morning to celebrate the legacy of our four leaders. We are talking about four leaders, one revolution. And we are doing so in presence of our comrades from our sister parties as they have been introduced to all of us. This celebration is represented by the unveiling of the historical Romero, which I must proudly commend our local artist, who has really done a commendable job just to bring up the idea and to think how we can, in a very effective and fashionable manner, can bring these three continents together in a way of art. We really commend you, our artists. I must say, as we are present here to witness the unveiling, to me, this should be an inspiration to all of us as this mural is dedicated to our four leaders who have defined and continue to inspire the trajectory of our respective countries. The historical journey we travel together is a proud legacy for succeeding generation in our respective countries. In the past, we have gone through different times and in their hardship. In the present today, we continue to stand firm together in search of justice and secure world. Let this not be forgotten that we know as much as most of our countries got their independence, we still have parts of the world which are still struggling for their independence. As we gather here today, the Palestine people still yearn for the freedom to exercise their right to self-determination. And I'm glad that the minister from Palestine, 
is here with us. I'm sure some of you will recall that this event was supposed to take place some times back. But for the reasons we didn't know, it was postponed. And as we all know, nothing happened without a reason. I believe we were made to postpone this event to allow the Minister of Palestine to be present. And Comrade Minister, you are welcome and we sincerely feel that this event has now been elevated higher than what it could be had we done it sometimes back. The Palestine people are subject to a human blockade and separation walls that prevent them from accessing their basic human needs. We have listened to the minister who is informing us not a history, but something that happened today. And we don't know. By the time we end this event, we will not know how men would have killed. Where's the artist? Wait, yeah, it was going to say, where's the artist? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.